Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I'm joined by my old friend of the show, Nick Marguerite of Nicky Moon Symbols. Nick, welcome back. Thanks so much for having me, Bart. It's great to be here. Yeah, you've kind of become our uh, our symbol guy. You're the you're a repeat guest, um, and uh, you are a symbol craftsman, a master. Um, so it's really cool to have you here and get your perspective on this topic, which is, I think, just awesome that that you kind of brought it to me. It's it's myths, symbol myths, which I think there's a lot of them. There are quite a few. Yeah, yeah and I mean, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of thinking like. Um, B8 means it's cheap or, you know, the vintage K's or the best symbols ever made or or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so, uh, this is really cool. We had some that were submitted, uh, to us from people on, um, Instagram, which I'm going to try and call people out as we go, but without, I don't want to disrupt the flow. So maybe at the end, I'll just give some shout outs to people who who gave suggestions because sure. Otherwise, uh, I probably should have prepped that beforehand. But Whenever um, you want to pop them in, it's cool. Yeah. All right, Nick. Well, then why don't we hop in here and what would you call myth number one? All right. Well, before we even approach myth number one, I just want to make like one point about symbols. I mean, actually, it applies to life in general, but especially with symbols. There's sure. no like universal truths, no universal yes, no, right, wrong, because all symbols are made differently. So it can't, nothing can apply like a blanket statement to everything, you know? You just always have to take that into consideration. So, but so going into myth number one, um, if it's B20 bronze, it's automatically good. Hmm. Okay. So I'm sure like, are you familiar with this concept that, you know, B20 is the superior metal and B8 is the, you know, inferior metal? Um, Yeah. Well, that can be true for a lot of the time. B20, like anything else, is it's a craft product and it needs to be made well for it to be good. So well-made B20 is pretty superior to everything else, but poorly made B20 is, you know, leave something to be desired. So we always have to take that into consideration. Like there's like some, you know, cheaper, like those Wuhan new traditionals, not to say anything bad about Wuhan, but a lot of the marketing was like, well, they're B20, they're hand hammered and they're super cheap. And it's like, well, yeah, listen to them versus like, listen to a Istanbul Agap, you know, something and there's a noticeable difference. Yes, they're both technically B20, but the quality of hmm. said B20, you know, it's it varies quite a bit. Well, and like we said in the previous podcast um, that Nick was on, which was the uh, history of symbol making, which is uh, one of my favorites of all time, just because of uh, the preparation and all that that went into it on your part. But on that note, I know uh, Peisty is pretty much uses a lot of B8, right? And they're very Mm -hmm. high quality. Very high quality. They use B8, B15-ish is their Mm. signature proprietary alloy. And then they also use a form of B20 for some of their lines, but it's different than the Turkish B20 a little bit. It's theirs is made in Germany a little bit more, uh, a little bit different, but um, yeah, they they use that that B8 uh, for a lot of their professional stuff and they just craft it very, very, very well. And they mm. get an outstanding result, you know? Yeah, it's interesting how you can, I don't know. I feel like, like you said, that every symbol is different and how people make it is different. And you can just, uh, and Wuhan, but there's something to be said about those cheaper symbols where not everyone can afford, oh, for you sure. know, a $400 ride. So Absolutely. There's, a, there's a place for everything. Uh, certainly, certainly. Yeah, I just, you know, I'm just making the, the distinction that, uh, it, I just don't want anyone to just think, okay, well, if it checks these boxes, B20, hand hammer, blah, 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 boom, it's automatically, it's going to be a, a home run, you know? Yeah. What do you, tip? Do, are you typically B20 with Nikki yes. Moon? Mm-hmm. That's what I use for the Have most part. Have you ever part. used B8? Yes, I do. I do quite a bit of B8 stuff as well. Um, it's hard to get people on board with it though, because of the pervasive myth. Um, they still have this thing in their head that it's a cheaper thing. And it's like, yeah. well, no, it's, it's all about time invested in the, in the work. You know, yeah. that's really where cost comes into a product, how much time was put into it. Yeah, you can't really, uh, if something, if, if there's more and more and more time put into it, obviously it's more expensive. There's no way around that. No. And we went in depth on in the last podcast about the difference between the B8 and B20. So anybody who's interested in that, I would definitely suggest going and listening to that one because we really kind of dug into it pretty deep there. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's a great one. Nice, easy one to knock off. 
So myth number two, then, uh, mm -hmm. if it's hand hammered, it's automatically good. Yep. And this kind of is an extension of, of what we were just talking about. So there's different kinds of hand hammering. Um, that's something to consider. Um, there's like factory style hand hammering, which is anytime you think of a factory, you think of like a production line. Okay. It's everything is set up. Ma manufacturing is an art. Okay. People go to college and study manufacturing, become experts in manufacturing, and they go to companies and they their whole purpose is to just teach the company how to do everything faster and more efficiently. Yeah. So any company or any business that's involved in manufacturing on a larger scale is is doing things quickly and efficiently to save money and conserve labor and all those things. So factory hand hammering is done as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't always get the best result, which is why so many of the handmade Turkish symbols, it's kind of a crapshoot. Like some of them are really, really good. And some of them are like, eh, you know, it's okay. But they're <laughs> yeah. selling it as the same thing. And that's yeah. because they're not taking that extra time that a person like me can afford to do because I'm not casting the metal. That's a whole other part of the process that takes a huge amount of time. Yeah. They've done all of that. So by the time I get my bronze, all my time goes into the tuning, sound, hammering part. You know, for them, they just can't afford to spend that much time on it. Yeah, there's a little bit of it um, where for you, obviously being able to put in all the time and, and craft it, but I feel like it's like those, so there's certain things where it's like, um, like with studio equipment, like if you get a pair of headphones and they have the term studio headphones, mm -hmm. they're usually like a hundred dollars more or something <laughs> yeah. or a thousand dollars more. But like, right. you know what I mean? You throw hand hammered on it and then mm -hmm. it's automatically like a different. A hundred percent. It's like putting like, uh, no carbs or something on like on food. You know, when you go to the grocery <laughs> yeah, store and like, like you, you buy something and it's like vegan, no GMO, blah, blah, blah. It's like all these boxes they check, but they don't really mean anything. Like you got to look at what's actually yeah. in it, you know? Yeah. Um, so you know, that's that's one thing to consider. Um, machine hammering, it's a term you hear a lot when, you, when the symbols are discussed, and that can mean different things. There's different kinds of machines to hammer symbols. Like there's a pneumatic blacksmith style forging hammer, which the, what this is doing is it's controlling the peen smacking against the anvil, but you as an operator still have to feed the symbol in and out of this machine and direct where the blows are going which is a very different process than like a CNC style machine hammering, mm -hmm. um, which is done on a lot of like the, you know, the newer Minel stuff. Actually, they've mm -hmm. been doing it for a long time. Um, that is literally just set it and forget it. You put the symbol blank in, boop, and it just runs a program and, and yeah. it's done, you know? So there's different yeah. levels of human involvement in, in machine hammering. It depends on how that was done. So. Again, like the way Peisty does their 2002s, they're using a machine, they're using B8, but the operator's feeding the symbol in and out of the machine, and he's shaping it sort of by hand with the aid of a machine. And that's why those symbols sound so good. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, because we're humans and there's this inherent fear that uh, soon we'll be, you know, enslaved by robots and <laughs> Skynet and all that, I feel like we yeah. need it to still have some human stuff but like there is there anything wrong with having a, a symbol that was completely created start to fit you know what i mean though no i mean there's maybe not that's a myth it, it's it just, has to uh, be made by human well it depends i get it all depends on what you want to use it for yeah um i think the more loud and aggressive the music you're playing is the less you need your symbol to have all this nuance to it hmm. the symbol is literally just creating a high frequency that's cutting through all kinds of stuff like it doesn't really matter if you're playing metal. Yeah. I used to play metal. Like mm -hmm. you don't need a symbol that has full frequencies, you know? Hmm. So in that instance, yeah, big, heavy B8 machine thing is great, you know? Yeah. But sure. if you're playing jazz, like that thing needs to have full mood, you know, the, the your soul needs to be pouring out of that symbol. And the only yeah. way to get that is with the person. The only way hmm. you can't program even with the greatest algorithm in the world, you cannot program that. You know? Yet. Yet. And the <laughs> no, reason for it, not to get too, spend too much time on this one, but you got to remember when you're hammering a symbol, it's not just about like, oh, there's like a protocol and I'm following it. Every time you hit it, something happens and then you have to react to it. 
Hmm. So it's a it's like a conversation you have with the metal. So like, how could you ever program that unless you had like artificial intelligence, a machine that could recognize the changes that are happening as it's happening, which I'm sure yeah. we'll get there at some point. But yeah, right now, the human brain is the only thing that can do that. Absolutely. And obviously, I'm just messing around with robots and all that stuff. But like, I think that that is the beauty of it. And that natural. That's why someone like you who's making these and is like touching every symbol is is the importance and the, the beautiful thing. So um Cool. Yeah. All right, then uh, why don't we move on to myth three? What do you got? Okay. Myth three, we got, this one's about lathing. So the myth is lathing is all about removing weight or making a bright tonality. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know how familiar you are with the process of lathing. No, could you like elevator pitch? What does la- What is the purpose of lathing? The original purpose of lathing was simply to get the oxide from the casting, melting, tempering process off of the symbol to expose the bronze underneath. The only mm-hmm. way to do it was to strip away the outside and they did that with a lathe. Um, now, with all kinds of technological advances, lathing can be used to accomplish a number of different things. Um, but the actual process of lathing a symbol doesn't just change the surface finish. It also affects the shape and the tension of the symbol. So you have to always consider that when you're making changes to the surface as well and then Hmm. account for what you've done in a different way because it's all about balance yeah so it's one ingredient in multiple different it's one ingredient so um basically like i'll get a lot of like modification requests you know from people that'll be like hey i have a whatever a zildjian k custom something or other ride and I, I, I want it to sound like this minor half laved thing, right? Half lathe thing. If you just lathe this symbol, will it sound like that symbol, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, it'll look like it. But yeah. there was way too many other factors that went into creating like that model. Like lathing's only one part of it. And it's, so the appearance alone, you know, isn't going to necessarily change the full acoustics of the symbol. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I like how here on your um, document you sent over, which I'll share this too with people so they can kind of follow along Mm -hmm. in the show notes. um, But about how there's also, and I've heard uh, Steel Turkington, who's been on another episode, he talked about how, kind of reminds me of how bearing edges can sometimes be like a marketing, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, term. Obviously, bearing edges are important. Lathing is important, but it's kind of a buzz thing too a little bit with... You know, it is because I mean, a company they want to sell a product. Um, they don't have time to explain the whole process to you. Like they, that's way too long to put on, you know, mm-hmm. on a fifteen second plug or whatever. Like so, yeah, they yeah. just have to give you like, oh, the edges, the edges lathe, and it does this, and you're like, oh, cool. Now I want it. You know, like I understand why, but yeah. those things have gone into people's heads and they've sunk in as like truths, and it's like, well, no, it's that's just a little part of of the story. So that's all I'm trying yeah. to. Trying to get out there. And that's not to say that I can't modify a symbol to sound like another symbol. It's just that it may take way more steps than just lathing it to look like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, I think that modifying, so so that whole process, um, kind of a side question would be like, someone would send you whatever, a symbol that they're just not really happy with. Maybe mm-hmm. they used to like it. Maybe it's too thick. Mm-hmm. And then you just typically shave some weight off and work with it, right? How does that process work? Do you do you do do you add hammering? I mean, how yeah, do you typically I can do? Fully, basically, in a lot of the modifications I do, you're basically getting like a brand new symbol. I, I kind of take the thing back to a blank and then start over, depending on how yeah. aggressive of a change you want. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, hey, I like this symbol, but it's got this hmm, weird you know noise or frequency that i don't like and i'm able to just remove that and send it back to them and they're happy and it's still kind of the same thing just frequency removed or frequency added Um, but in other cases people have you know i have this z custom thing from the 80s and and i don't play metal anymore like what what else can we do with it and Mm. then i really like that's a complete reimagination of that piece of material you know that's a perfect example because those are such thick just beefy symbols. So you yeah. just lay the bunch off and I, I it turned out. anybody who's interested in seeing this, uh, I turned a power bell, twenty two inch power bell ride into like a power bell jazz ride. And that's on my <laughs> YouTube. Um 
So you can, you can awesome. see, um, yeah, you can remove a ton of the weight and you can change the taper, change the shape, the tension, the, the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And, yeah. uh, lathing in itself, and we'll move on here, but that's something that, uh, you don't just go out in your garage and start lathing, uh, symbols. It seems, it seems <laughs> no. a little dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. And I caution anybody that is, you know, doing it or trying to do it or whatever. That machine is extremely dangerous and it needs to be treated with a great deal of respect and caution and per personal protective equipment and all that stuff. Um, hmm. But no, it's a, I mean, at any symbol company, it's like a four or five year apprenticeship to learn how to, to do anything like that, like lathing, you know? Wow. And it's taken me easily that long, if not longer to get to where I am, you know, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Last question about lathing, and then we'll move back to the list. What do you do with all, I think I asked this in the first episode, but when you have like, like I like watching your videos where you're lathing, but then there's obviously this giant pile of like, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, metal yeah. shaved off. What do you do with that? I recycle it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know if it was like melt it into another symbol or. No, if I had a foundry, that's what they do in the, in the factories. Yeah. They, gotcha. just, they just turn that right into another symbol, but I don't have the capacity to, to do that, no. unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, there's a place in town here that, that takes it and they give me a few bucks, you know? That's cool. Yeah. All right. So next, um, myth, which I think when I, when I asked, uh, this on Instagram, a bunch of people, uh, asked this question which again yeah. i'll shout you guys out i'll go through and just list some names at the very end but um the uh it's about cleaning symbols there is an ideal way to clean symbols is kind of the myth um yeah. should you clean symbols shouldn't you clean symbols yeah. this is think? like the big one i think on our list here yeah. this is like the biggest point of like disagreement and and anger between symbol enthusiasts that i ever see like on the internet or in conversations People are very, it's like politics, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. they like, they dig their heels into the ground. And like, this is where I stand on this. Um, but at the end of the day, there's no ideal way to clean a symbol. That's the truth. There isn't. Everybody's like, oh, I got this stuff and I buy this stuff mm -hmm. at Home Depot or I use a lemon. Yeah, yeah, it might work for you, but it's not going to work for everybody. I promise you. And yeah. there's reasons for that. Um, first of all, different types of bronze, right? Um, different companies use different ink for their logos. One company mm -hmm. might use a, a water-based ink. Another company might use an oil-based ink. They might, and then, you know, first company might use a, a, a polyurethane clear coat. And then the other company might use wax or something mm -hmm. else or a resin. So how could one product possibly work for all those different fats? It's just, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay? It's just impossible. So, yeah. um, but then there's the whole other side of the argument where people are like, well, should you or shouldn't you? Like, I can't tell you that. That's what do you want, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, what, like, I guess the question would be, and I've, I'm asking this kind of rhetorically, but I'm, I'm, I know the answer of like, you, why would you clean a symbol? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it would be because your symbols, you bought a used one that's really grimy. It's got like green kind of spots on it or something. Yeah. Fingerprints all over it. Maybe you're not in a bad way, a little bit OCD or something. You don't like I, any. I am. So, yeah, you like your clean symbols. Um, so those, I guess, are the reasons. I mean, is there any other, uh, I mean, well, maybe there, there are sonic effects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of like certain finishes do make a difference for sure. Like mm. a, you know, brilliant versus a, a patina versus a whatever. Yeah. They're, they do have different effects on the sound, but mm. keep in mind, it's a piece of metal. Like, yeah just changing a little bit on the surface yes you will get some different characteristics but in general it's still the same thing so like i've I've seen like oh you're gonna ruin it like you're not gonna ruin it dude that thing was <laughs> made in lava temperatures it was hammered it was laid like that thing's been through a lot like a little bit of like ketchup <laughs> isn't gonna change the game you know what i'm saying um yeah does but, that fall in this category the ketchup thing i mean that's is that one of them yeah that's a one people some people are very passionate about ketchup on symbols and you know <laughs> that's fine man like just yeah you know whatever works for you but yeah the whole cleaning thing I, i've something i've struggled with as a manufacturer it's tough because like when i prepare a symbol uh, you know i want to sell it to somebody as new it's new it's a new thing um but they all people also want to hear it so i have to do sound demos and put them on my website so i make the symbol and then i put my logo on and, and go through all of that and then i play it and now it's got yeah. stick marks and fingerprints and stuff. And yeah. there really isn't a way to get that off completely without completely stripping everything off. 
like the logo and stuff. So it's 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 tough. Sometimes I don't want to play them. I just want to put them away, you know, but people want to hear yeah. them. So uh, mm. fortunately, most people don't care that much. I care more about it. I really do like have like a low level OCD situation going on. So like <laughs> it causes me a lot of distress when I'm making a symbol. I'm so careful not to touch it or whatever else. And then yeah. my customer will come pick it up and they'll just put their big greasy fingers on it. And, and I'm like, <laughs> why did I spend two days like not sleeping? Yeah. And this guy doesn't even just care. On the sides. He doesn't even care, you know? <laughs> so what do you uh, do? How do you clean them if you have to? Um, well, so I used to, I I do logos differently than I used to. The old method that I did logos wasn't as robust and nice looking as the, the method I use now. So it was easier to remove. So and it was easier to do and it was cheaper. So if I had to, I could just wipe that off and, and do whatever I had to do to clean it, even relay that if I had to, and then put mm. that logo back on. Now the logos I use, it's very expensive ink, very, you know, kind of tricky process. I don't want to do that twice. I no. hate doing logos. It's like the part that I loathe the most. So um, I just try to keep them clean. I try to not let them get dirty. You That's know? a good point. And if they do, I use like a tiny bit of like dish soap hmm. and a little bit of water on a microfiber rag. Sometimes we'll take stuff off. Um, just don't let the, your finger oils get into it. So I'll handle them with gloves, you know? God, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I'm the guy with the big greasy hand who's just grabbing them and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, which is fine. I mean, it's it's an instrument, right? Like, who cares? Yeah. Who really cares? But we just get caught up in all this neurotic stuff. And I was yeah. actually testing them. Nylon tip sticks don't leave nearly as much of a mark on a cymbal. And yeah. I was doing all my demos with nylon tips. And then people started complaining. And they're like, why are you, why are you doing that? And I was like, well, because I'm trying to keep them looking good. Yeah, but then... <laughs> you <it's>... know, <laughs> they're like... God, there's there's so many variables. Like I can't make you people happy. <laughs> no, <laughs> leave it alone. I don't alone. know what to do. There's so many variables, like nylon. Like when you try out a symbol or a demo over the you know YouTube or whatever, if you're playing it, I mean nylon tip, wood tip, uh, yeah. Just there's all these different things, like how hard you're playing, how soft you're playing. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing, uh, jumping around a little bit you were just talking about the logo so on yeah. your sheet here it says there's no way to clean a symbol without removing the logo that's also true and brands don't want you to remove it because they like their logo now neil pert peart uh he famously he liked to remove his mm -hmm. logos um and a lot of people don't like logos at all you know yeah. a lot of drummers don't like them um it's just a, it's a necessary part of branding you know yeah that's interesting. I've had, I think I posted something online and um, there was like a debate between a few people on a video where they were like, I, someone was like, I take off every logo. Um, I don't want to be a billboard for the brand. I believe it was Peisty. And it was like another person answered and said, I'm proud to have this symbol. I paid $350 or whatever, yeah, 300 bucks right. for these hi-hats. I want to have this on there. And right. I think both are totally valid. They are. They're both totally valid. And again, it's it's all personal preference. And I try to take a middle of the road stance on all this stuff because at the end of the day, my job is to make you happy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not about what I want. It's about what you want. So if somebody requests, and I do have customers that don't, they request their symbols to be made brand new with no logos. And I will absolutely supply it like that. I know most wow. companies won't, but I will do that because- Yeah, I, that's crazy. I want you to have a good experience. I want you to play what you love, you know? Yeah. That's, cu that's mean, what custom symbols are. It's what you want. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I feel like I would get, I mean, I feel like you, if you have it, you'd be able to tell. But like in a couple years, if you have a bunch of symbols that have no logos or anything on it, I feel like I'd kind of get like, wait, which one is this? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe <laughs> yeah. I'm just an idiot, but. No, um, no. I mean, some of them look pretty, pretty similar. So. Yeah. You know, it, you can easily get confused for sure. Yeah. Have you ever tried the ketchup stuff or do you have any experience with that? I have tried that? everything dude yeah everything what was I'm your experience you, i and my experience is there's no ideal way to clean symbols that's why <laughs> okay. i say so this. it all comes back around yeah it all comes back okay. around i have literally gone through every product at home depot lowe's like i've i've done different acid solutions um i was like getting into chemistry at one point trying to figure this out um there's just they, symbols are so individual. It's super weird. They all react differently. Yeah. Even two of the same type of symbol will react differently to different stuff. Hmm. I swear there's like they're alive or something somehow. Yeah. They're, they're, it's weird. Seriously. Yeah. So, Man, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I have, have totally been through the whole thing and, and was just 
going crazy. And then I eventually was like, you know what? This just doesn't exist. Yeah, just use dish soap. I remember buying a kid uh, as a kid, like one of those, it was like a little gold tin kind of jar that was like, or not a jar. Buckaroo. Like a, yeah, I think Buckaroo. that's what it was. Yep, it smelled like super petroleum, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah I, I was way that. too young. I was out, like, I remember sitting on my driveway kind of trying it a little bit. And then like, I don't know. Yeah. I think I was just, I mean, I was like 10 or something. And I was yeah. like, I don't think I know what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. um and then it dried up, I think. Like yeah. years later, I went to reopen and it was just totally yeah. kind of yeah, it stuff didn't past its prime. Yeah. yeah. I remember so, Buckaroo. I, I had a, that it that stuff took a lot of elbow grease, man. You had to really lay into that stuff to get it to come yeah. off. Yeah. That's too probably much, why I gave up. Too much work. That's, and like, if you do that in a closed room, like you're getting high. Yeah. <laughs> that explains <laughs> so, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They should have put cool. that on the package. You know? <laughs> warning, <laughs> yeah, we'll parental warning. Don't let your 10 year old do this. <laughs> Um, yeah. so yeah, well, people out there clean your symbols, however you want. If you don't like them clean, don't clean them. If you like clean them, clean them the way that you like it and stop yelling at other people and telling them they're doing it wrong. Everybody likes different things and that's fine. Yeah. That's a good rule in general. Quit yelling yeah. at other people. Yeah. Just stop, stop with the fighting. Yeah. So. All right. Good cool. myth there. How about, uh, yeah, take it away on myth number five. This oh, is a, man. this is All a right, good got, one. I'm going to have to try to tone it down because this one I like, <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit, start raging out here. Yeah. Um, and you might have to cut me off because I might like fill the full rest of the time we have. <laughs> uh, myth five, I need slash deserve an endorsement. Okay. Yeah. Give me your uh, initial reaction to that statement, please. Well, my initial reaction is that endorsements, um, I think on paper are different than what they actually are because i kind of got into that in the mid 2000s where there was like the custom boutique drum brand it was like you know i was teaching a bunch of people i was playing in a band it was like i want an endorsement and i still ended up paying like two thousand dollars for a drum set so i do think there's a little bit when i think of endorsement i think of a and i know there's some famous uh companies out there who are very heavy into getting endorsements for people yeah we're going to talk about that and I think it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a scam, because I'm sure for some people it's not, but I think at that at that level where there's someone who's not a touring drummer where it's really out there and you're still paying 80% or whatever, that's my reaction. I think I got duped a little bit when I was like, you know, my yeah. early 20s. Yeah, let me go ahead and clear that up. It's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I mean, well, it's, you could loosely define the term scam. Yeah. Um, it's... Well, let me start at the beginning here. Um, so endorsements, like going back to like, think about sports, right? Like think about Michael Jordan, you know? Endorsements were for high profile, super professional people who needed the best stuff and had an enormous, enormous reach as far as people looking up to them and looking to them for what should I buy? Yeah. Right. That is so in the interest of a of a company, that's the the whole thing. Visibility for your product. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why they do it. What well, why else would you do it? You know, as a as a yeah. maker, you don't ever want to get less money for what you sell or make or give it away for free. Yeah. So that's where it kind of comes from. And the same in the music industry. Like if you're a high profile touring drummer, which unfortunately like doesn't really exist anymore because <laughs> nobody's yeah, touring, sure. but and you have a need for, oh, like I'm going to be on tour in Europe and I don't know if I can get my gear over there, but like, okay, you're endorsed, you know, endorsing company will hook you up with the distributor in that country and let you borrow some. Like it's a relationship where you are advertising for the company and they are supplying you with the equipment you need to do your job, you know? Yeah. But people have completely lost sight of the fact that it is a 50 50, like give and take relationship. Like, an endorsement is supposed to benefit both parties. It's a partnership. It's a business partnership, really, you know, at its core. Now, people think they just literally all the time will approach me and just be like, hey, I want an endorsement. And it's like, well, who are you? <laughs> like, who, who are you? Why would I do that? Yeah. You know, like, like, your opening line like, better be like super solid, professional, send me an email don't say yo bro like start it you know yeah like like you're applying for a job yeah because that's what it is it's a job you work for me and i help you out that's what it is yeah you know what i mean i mean i should say too that maybe obviously you're on the end of it of of the maker of the one being applied to 
for these. I get it where if you're listening to this and you've got endorsements or you're reaching out to people, I totally get it. But I can also see both sides where I'm like, like, I get the the draw of being like, I want to be endorsed. I think people. I get it, too. I know you get it, but obviously yeah. you're 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 the one who's getting the emails where I'm sure it's a little bit like um, really to the and I, it, it would have been me reaching out to a company as an 18 year old who has no business being endorsed. I would bring no benefit to this company, but I just wanted to reach out because why the hell not? And it feels like you're being proactive in your drum career. You know yeah, what I mean? Abs- no, you're absolutely right. And I think a lot of people have taken to, they, they look at their heroes, they look at Benny Greb, and he's got a list of products that he uses on every single post. So they're like, well, if I want to be Benny Greb, I need to have that. And that's why they think that. And I don't knock people, like, I don't mean to come off too hard. No, no people, no, I'm right. just, I always want to educate people to think about what you're asking for. You know, before you open your mouth, before you send that email, think about what you're doing first, you know, from both sides. And then yeah. use that to guide your process. Um, but having an endorsement isn't necessarily going to raise your profile as an artist. Like it might a little bit, mm-hmm. but if you want to raise your profile as an artist, practice yes. and work hard. And guess what? You will get endorsements. I promise you. You know what I'm They'll saying? They'll come to you. They will come like, to you. Or if you know, you won't have any trouble getting things. If you have thousands of Instagram followers, you, now you got some value. If you have 300, what, what are you doing for me? Like, oh, I got a bunch of gigs coming up. Well, dude, playing in a in a dive bar in low lighting where maybe one person there is a drummer, maybe, isn't really like advertising at all. So like gigs don't even really count unless you're at a festival and it's being filmed, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, for real. I've heard of uh, a story and I can't remember where, where it was a very famous drummer and I truly can't remember who it was. I think they even just said it was a very famous drummer who had no social media presence and he then was having trouble getting endorsements Mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you know, um, Eric Moore or these mega awesome, super great uh, drummers who have a big Instagram presence. It's more of a draw where I'm talking, it was like a drummer from like a a, a very big classic rock band where he just wasn't, I mean, he was probably in his fifties. He just wasn't into it Mm -hmm. and it, it had hurt him. So yeah, for sure. Because that's the, really a new form of advertising. So, yeah, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a more effective way. If you invest in somebody that's got a big reach there, then you're, you're doing, you're making a smarter decision as a, as a company, I think. Yeah. You know, if you, if, if you really legitimately think that you have a need or it will benefit you or it's something that you want, this is what you need to do. You need to make a list of all of your values. Like, what do you offer me? And and you need to open with that, yeah. not what you want. You need to say, hey, listen, I'm so-and-so. I have this many followers. Here's a nice organized list with links and a bio and a picture. And these are all the things I've accomplished. And these are all the things that I can see doing for your company. Hmm. With that in mind, would you consider working with somebody like me? And then you're going to have a much better uh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense completely like that's like anything in life i mean and i do think that it's it's gotten to a point where like people with less followers like there's big companies who look at it and go okay they're like micro influencers or whatever where you can reach people and you don't need to have a hundred thousand followers maybe you believe in someone if they're if they're starting low um i have people that don't have huge you know you know followers but they're people that i believe in very strongly because i see passion and talent and you know they're they're doing music for the right reason you know and i'm able to help them and we're able to help each other that's that's huge for sure yeah and i mean my last thought would be the the like you said before like from 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 everything i've seen and heard from people is like an endorsement and all that stuff you'll kind of know when you're at that point a need will a legitimate need will present itself and you will need to fill that need and then you'll go out and do it for sure yeah yeah so but um, uh, to make one point about that that uh, company you were talking about before, uh, the, the predatory endorsing thing. <laughs> so look, we are in a highly competitive market now, right? And there's a lot of companies making symbols and people making symbols. So some companies are like, okay, how do we get customers? Well, you play on people's vanity, right? There's a lot of people out there that want endorsements. It makes them feel good. They want to tag it and whatever. So 
all that they do is they make a price listing where they inflate their price by 20%. And then they give you an endorsee discount of 20% and you're endorsed. And guess what? If you go to their website, there's no mention of you. There's no, they're not supporting you at a clinic. There's no, there's no relationship whatsoever. They literally just sold, you're a customer. Yeah. You're a customer. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, it's a way to get customers and some companies, they use that as their, their business model. You know, yeah. So whatever. No. And, and I, I only. Not saying it's I wrong. Agree. I'm just saying that's what it is. No. And, but I, and I always like to say this, cause again, I've had it so many times where someone on the show, many people probably own c- symbols from those companies, which if you like the symbols, if you enjoy them. That should them. be the number one thing. Do you even like the product? Yeah. Like you, you should play stuff that you, that inspires you, you know? You know, I did this same thing and I will, I won't mention the brand, but I did the same thing with, uh, drumsticks where it was a maker of drumsticks. And, um, I was, again, it was like, I think I was like 18 and I was like, you know, I need to be doing stuff. I need to yep. be, you know, doing all this. And I'm, I'm sending this stuff to companies and I'm like, again, I was teaching a lot and I was playing in bands around Cincinnati in mm-hmm. bars where no one's seeing it. Yeah. So there really isn't a point, especially sticks, but, um, and I bought the sticks, emphasis on bought the sticks, mm-hmm. and um, I hated them. Did not like them. Didn't they didn't feel good? And yeah. I used them for like a week or two, and then I started just kind of giving them out to students. And um, and I, I learned a lesson. That's kind of taught me that lesson of like, oh, I did the exact same thing. Just like, yeah, <laughs> the exact yeah. same thing. Yep. I yeah. I when I was a very young drummer in a rock band, I was like, I should get some gear thing just to kind of I don't know become official. And I went on and got a drumstick thing with some smaller company. And yeah, I got the sticks and I was like, I don't even want to play these. So yeah, right back it was to a bad, birth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was yeah. a bad feeling being like, oh man, can I not use the sticks that I like now? Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Like, yeah, exactly. Then I was like, wait, no one, no one's looking at me. No one cares. <laughs> Just go back to, yeah, but that's like, I went back to yeah. Vic Firth. Um, yeah, they're awesome. All right. Well, All right, we're moving on. So anyways, yeah. Okay. Thanks for letting me, I feel like I just had an exorcism. <laughs> yeah. Exercise. <laughs> feel great, the man. Okay. Got that out. All right. So myth number six, this is another hot topic. Vintage symbols are better. This is the myth. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, my thought would be there's crappy symbols that were made 40 years ago. There's great symbols that were made 40 years ago. Same thing with right now. Yeah. Um, but I do think sometimes maybe, like you said, metal is a living thing in a way. Maybe mm-hmm. it ages well over time. Maybe it's been played a lot. That is a factor. There is a scientific okay. process. Mm-hmm. That's my thought. Is is it it? But there, I've definitely had old symbols where I got them and I was like, wow, this is. Like, I think I bought one at a pawn shop and it was like, it's 20 bucks. I got to buy it. Mm-hmm. And it was awful. Yeah. So that's kind of the pervasive myth. And uh, vintage symbols do have a vibe. They do sound different. Um, they were made differently in the, in the past. They were made the way that I make symbols right now, which is the old fashioned way. Um, symbols from the f- 1940s to 70s are generally the ones that are thinner and kind of good sounding vintage ones. Before that, they were all like marching cymbals. So they were really heavy and small and not really stuff you would use for like a drum set. You know, there's a lot of like old Ks, but they're like 12 inches and like two, you know, 10 pounds. Yeah. um, Because they were marching cymbals and like, what are you going to do with that now? Yeah, really? Um, But B20 bronze, B20 bronze only, actually as it ages, it's always changing. Um, You're combining, remember it's 80% copper, 20% tin. Um, you're making an alloy, which almost like in the eyes of nature is like like an abomination. Um, and immediately upon being alloyed, these two metals are actually sort of trying to separate from each other. Hmm. And that is actually the cause of like all the changes that go on in the symbol. Um, I was, I was getting pretty deep into metallurgy, um, around the time we did our last podcast and I had read this thing from this metallurgical uh, scientist who had s- stated basically once they're combined they are immediately beginning the inevitable uh stage of separation wow. now no idea how long that could be like three hundred thousand years i don't think anyone's <laughs> ever seen an example of a piece of bronze that had ever yeah. like actually done that but if you think about like if you leave a piece of like iron or steel or something out like it'll eventually just completely oxidize and dissolve and like 
turn into the earth again. It's like trying to wow. achieve homeostasis with the planet. Sure. So bronze is, is always like changing internally. And mm. over time, it hardens. And that hardness gives a very unique sound to it. It also adds to the brittleness of the symbol too, which is another thing to consider. Older is more likely to crack. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a good... I mean, this is all good, but that's a very good, like, practical, maybe reason to not buy, not go older. Or, like, I, I shouldn't say not go older, but I think people, like, are drawn to it because you hear all of this really great stuff. But that's, like, a watch out, you know? Just be careful. I mean, if you're a light jazz guy, like, you're probably not going to yeah, run too much risk of breaking something. But if you do any kind of bashing, crashing, crash riding and stuff, like, yeah, you know, if something's 50 years old, like, there's, it might, you know? Be yeah. a little bit more prone to to it's like it's when I get old symbols like that to modify, I have to be very careful when I'm hammering them. You know, I yeah. try to do just a little little bit hmm. um, because the risk is so much higher for cracking them. If you were to, in words, put um, like what the benefit of like like what's the is it maybe like just it's a vibe or something, but like what's the benefit of using? these old symbols over buying a brand new one, you know? Yeah. Well, for a while it was because people like me didn't really exist. So like you couldn't get like an old K unless you mm -hmm. bought an old K, but now like I'm making them kind of like pretty much the same way, you know? Yeah. You didn't really, people didn't have access to that before. So the only option was to buy vintage, you know, now there's like this new kind of craftsman revolution, which is super cool. But yeah. the other part of it is, and I do kind of buy into this a little bit, like, I also play guitar. Like if you play an old guitar that's been around, it kind of has like the, I don't know, the soul of each person that was with it, like kind of yeah. sticks with it a little bit. So sure. like, I do believe that if a, if an instrument has spent a certain amount of time around like really talented or creative people, they do like take in a little bit of that so that when you play it, you get something you can't even really explain with words. Kind of like hippie new agey, but you know. Well, no, it's kind of like, I don't want to call it a placebo but like, there's like maybe like this thing that like you you start to feel this like juju coming from it. That totally, like, you feel a connection to the past. You know, yeah. It's like the same thing with like those reclaimed wood tables that are like yeah. from like driftwood that's been you know in the ocean for four thousand years. It's yeah. just cool. You know, I don't know why it just is. It is because as people, we only get like eighty years. So when something's been around for four thousand years, that's kind of like blows our minds. You know. Yeah. So that's a good way to put it. Now, do you think the vintage K's are worth the money? That's, I, I can't say, defend, like, it's up to you. If yeah. you hear one that knocks your socks off, man, and you got the cash, get it, you know? But yeah. I wouldn't, like, remortgage your house for for one unless it really meant that much to you, you know? But make sure you yeah. hear it first because remember what I was saying earlier about hammering and factory-style hand hammering? A lot of that was done quickly, and it's a crapshoot. And, mm -hmm. you know, same thing with the old case. Some of them are magic, and some of them are, you know, dog crap, so... Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's the that's the general thing uh, I've heard about a lot of uh you know, people talking about Some of about them black are forgeries beauties. too, by the way. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I've heard that too. But um but yeah, black beauties are it's great. It's terrible. It's mm -hmm. it's just it's uh symbol to symbol or snare to snare. Totally. Totally. All right, myth 7. Patina is good, patina is bad. Um we obviously talked about this a little bit. Um I, yeah, I mean, just off the top of my head, doing what we've been doing, where I'm kind of giving you my initial reaction, I would say that if you like how that symbol sounds with patina on it, then it's good. Totally good. If you don't, then it's bad. Totally right? bad. You nailed it, dude. <laughs> okay. You nailed it. I mean, so like the theme of today's like show is it's kind of a personal preference and like, you know, different strokes for different folks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's an easy one. Um, all right, what's our next myth? Uh, drilling holes at the end of cracks will stop the cracks. Do you remember this? I remember this from a kid. Yeah. Being, being a kid. And uh, yeah. that was the thing. And yeah, I did, I did it on a Sabian AAX splash symbol. And it started cracking beyond the, the hole pretty quickly afterwards. That is not an effective yep. way to stop a crack. Mm -mm. Yeah, I did it on a... Um, oh, what was it? I did it on an A Custom, um, super thin, like 14-inch or no, it was like a 16 inch crash that cracked. Uh, and it was just like, what am I going to do with it? And I yeah. tried it and it didn't work. 
Yeah, yeah, it it'll stop it in the short term, but it won't last. Yeah, and uh, it, crack needs to be like you got to like cut it out like it's cancer. You got to yeah. cut around it because there's cracking that you don't see, like micro cracks. So you need to create like a like a little diversion of energy away from that area where the yeah. the structure is a little bit compromised. Mm. So really, yeah, the best way to deal with uh, a crack is to send it to a uh, symbol maker. <laughs> <laughs> send it to nikki moon yeah but and, and you don't do it in that sharp kind of like angle mm -hmm. it's got to be rounded off you, yeah you don't want sharp angle because it's got all the energy is going to be directed to one sharp point and then that's gonna further uh tell the symbol to crack more yeah, yeah that's i mean again for me it's like that was like a thing where i'm like oh i want to try that you know what i mean sure. you're, yeah. it's just like it's just fun to mess with your symbols and stuff totally totally yeah and I, yeah I um, the same thing and yeah I was like, oh, too bad. I wish, you know, wish it worked. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to, you know, it might stop them in the short term, but it's not going to be a long-term solution. No, and it did not sound good. It's still just immediately lost. That's when you, the when other you... thing. It's not going to sound good. That if you no. really remove that area, you you can still like retain some of the integrity of the symbol, you know? Sometimes you can't yeah. even tell. Yeah, but when I drilled it, it was like, it just lost its like body. It was just, yeah, it just it was it's almost hard to explain like what a symbol that's cracked sounds like. I mean, it just loses its. How would you describe that? The, exactly what you said. It loses its body like it, it goes from vibrating to not vibrating. That's really yeah, exactly. That's why it does that. The yeah. vibration is what creates the sound and that cracked area. Now you have like two detention spots that are kind of rubbing up against each other and they're just fighting the symbols vibration. So they're not allowing it to happen. Mm. Yeah, it's a shame. Shame. All right. So, um, okay. Myth nine, heavier symbols are always more durable. My thought with this was like from having an old Z crash was like, I thought it was almost the opposite where I yeah. had them where they crack more because it's just, it's less give. It's just more like, just like, you know, yep. thick you, symbol. Absolutely. You, you, uh, you nailed it. Um, the, I don't want to pick on Zildjian. This isn't nothing against them, but the, sure. do you remember the Z customs from the eighties? Uh, I think that's what you were just talking about. Yeah. I wasn't even born, but I, I had some, um, um, as far as on the crack symbol market, that's the most, like you'll see more of those than anything else. Hmm. Um, and the reason for that was, and by the way, to, to their credit, they very quickly figured this out and came out with, they re, re imagined that line and came out with a far superior version of it, which is, you know, yeah. really awesome. So cool. Um, yeah, they, they know what they're doing over there. Um, but, uh, those are, they're extremely heavy, first of all. Okay. And there's no, like you said, there's no give theoretically a medium symbol would be the most durable because you need to have yeah. a balance between, um, thickness and flexibility. All right. Which gets us into the, I'm going to use like a little uh, analogy here. Um, in the material science world, hardness versus toughness. They're two different things. They kind of sound similar, but they're not. Hardness yeah. is the ability to withstand friction, whereas toughness is the ability to resist fracturing when force is applied. All right, so if I give you an mm. example of like my anvil that I used to hammer against, an anvil needs to be hard enough so that when you strike it, it doesn't deform and change shape. But if it's too hard, it's going to be brittle. When you strike something and you create energy, it has to go somewhere. Like if you pushed me, right, and I didn't move, you would move backwards. Yeah. Or I would move. But something has to happen. You know? Sure. So in the case of the anvil, like if you if you get it to a hardness that's too great, it'll just it'll crack. You know? So it's hard, hmm. but it's not tough anymore. Yeah. So like a, a material like stainless steel is extremely tough. You can pound stainless steel, it'll never crack but it'll just continue to dent and bend and deform and you can just keep manipulating it mm. into other shapes and stuff. So a symbol, you want both. Like it needs to be hard enough to sound good and, and have, you know, symbol qualities, but it needs to be flexible enough to still not resist, to res be able to resist cracking, being too brittle. That's crazy. It's cool to think, and just, this is so, it's kind of related, but you talking about the anvil, I was listening to, um, a podcast talking about like the history of like blacksmiths mm -hmm. and using an anvil and that whole just process of using the anvil. And then it's kind of like that where the, I think maybe, I don't know how yours is 
grounded, but it was talking about how a lot of people will connect it to a log and then mm-hmm. sink it into the ground. Yep. So the force goes out and yep. it's just like, just cause I guess that absorbs some of the, some of the shock, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's also to protect your body. Yeah. Um, I actually just upgraded mine to a bigger, denser oak stump. It's huge. It, it's so heavy and that's it's, awesome. it's less fatiguing, you know, because you're creating energy and that some of that force is going to come back and we could get into a hole. We'll do another episode <laughs> about yeah. that stuff. But like the way you grip your hammer, like if you grip your drumsticks too tight, you'll get an injury. Same thing with your hammer. You got to keep like a loose grip and you got to let it bounce and yeah. just let the momentum and let science do its thing. You know, you just kind of to control it. Kind of like hitting a symbol. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you just like. Cr- There's a like right thing. way to hit a symbol. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it all ties back to what we're talking about. Yeah, um, 100%. Then that's another part of it too. Like symbols cracking, like that's how you're playing it. If you're playing it wrong, like you're going to crack it, even if it's a perfectly, you know, well-made whatever symbol. But so yeah, a thick, big, heavy thing that doesn't flex at all. The energy has to go somewhere and it's going to force it to crack. Mm. Yeah. Which sucks. I mean, we've all, hopefully, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're newer in your drum, you know, journey, it sucks when you crack a cymbal. And it's, it's like- the worst because they're, they're expensive. They're really expensive. And it's yeah. like, you just kind of like, you feel it. I feel like you feel like when you're like, rub, you know, touching the side of the cymbal or something, you feel like this little, something's there. Mm-hmm. And then if a month later, it's like, wow, it's starting to like appear yeah, more. And then- it's a super bummer. Yeah. Major yeah. bummer. But um, yeah. All right, that's a cool one. Uh, all right, myth 10, burying symbols in the ground does, doesn't do anything. I have no experience with this. I've watched some YouTube videos on it, but what, mm-hmm. what's the deal with this? It's, uh, again, it's, there's a number of factors, and that's why nobody can come up with a definitive answer or whatever. It depends on the following things. Does the symbol have a protective coating on it? If so, nothing will likely happen if you bury it. It'll get dirty and you'll waste your time, but that's pretty much it. If you remove the protective coating, you might get a reaction if you leave it in there for long enough, but you need to consider what's the climate like where you live? What's the pH of the soil that it's been buried in? How high is the water table? Is it getting exposed to moisture? Is there algae? Like all kinds of stuff that all will tie into it. So again, it's like if you do it in Arizona with a Piste versus if you do it in, you know, Brazil with a Zildjian, like two different things are going to happen and there's no, you know, no one has studied this. There hasn't been like a, me, you know, meta analysis on burying symbols yet. So no, um, and geolocations. And I know, yeah, I think Sylvia Massey, who's like, you know, legendary engineer, um, uh, she did it. And I think she had a lot of success, but I've also watched videos. I think it was like David Rauf, like yeah. R David R. R David R. He's awesome. Yeah. We're, but it, like he did it and he was like, this is not working. Yeah. Like it, he did it over and over again. And, and, uh, yeah. but, but again, it's fun. It's fun. And I've, I've done it. Um, I did it with a Piste. Um, I took, but I removed the coating, the protective coating. So now the bronze is exposed and that's a different, that's BA bronze, which reacts differently to the environment. But, um, sure. I did get some kind of reaction, but I had left it for like three months. You also have to like consider how long it's there. So. Yeah. I mean, and then at that point you're like, you're probably using a symbol that's not your go-to everyday symbol. That's that yeah. nice. I feel like a lot of times people do it with like a B8 ride or something like a, like a Sabian B8 ride. Like yeah. it's just like a cheaper symbol where. Yeah. They just like, you know, maybe I can make it sound more expensive, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Which, cover it, catch know, up and bury it. Yeah. Cover and catch <laughs> and bury it. You know, look, if you want to try it, go for it. But you could very well get that same effect that you're going, that you want out of it. Other ways. There's other ways to do it. You don't have to go through the pains of doing that. Real quick, what are some of those ways? I could, you know, I could modify it. I could apply uh, some kind of solution to it that would uh, sort of mimic that, you know? Yeah. And some people, you're, you know, experiment with using their own solutions and stuff and, you know, get out there okay. and have fun if you're the kind of person that likes to do that kind of stuff. Find out for yeah. yourself. Which I'm not. I mean, I am, but I'm not. <laughs> like, I'd rather you do it. You're too busy doing podcasts, bro. Um, myth 11 is pretty topical, um, to, to right now when we're talking, not really when this is going to come out. Cause it'll be if, you know, they're always about a month down the road. Um, an episode about Tony Williams just came out, uh, with Dave Goodman. So the, the myth here is myth 11. 
which is our last myth on the sheet. If I had Tony Williams ride symbol, I would sound like Tony Williams. Mm -hmm. what, well, yeah, what do you think about that? I think you're not going to sound like Tony Williams. Um, <laughs> you're going to sound like a guy playing Tony Williams ride symbol. Yeah. Tony's technique was in his hands and his unbelievable ability to play the drums. You know, that man was a true musician. Um, he also had a really awesome symbol. And yeah, those two sure. things combined gave you the experience that that it gave you. Um, you, you know, you just got to consider all the factors, the acoustics of the room. It was recorded like yeah, everyone's the hot for the Nefertiti ride. That's the one everybody wants. Well, it's like, okay, what room were they in? What mic were they yeah. using? What preamps did they have? You know, yeah. how high was the ceiling? Like there's all kinds of what kind of sticks, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, the... Um the recording stuff is so like you can make something sound completely different. You can EQ something completely different. And obviously that was more of an analog time where it's a little less yeah. like a little bit less. Yeah. 400 plugins on one track. But like, um, I mean, we've all heard the like person who can't sing and then the person who can't sing with auto tune. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can do the same thing with, you know, symbols. <laughs> and even on that note, I mean, that's a great example of like, even the person who can sing, um, I've never really worked on a session as an engineer where there isn't a little bit of pitch correction. I didn't like know on you were an engineer. I, well, on the percentage of like T pain, a hundred percent to like zero percent. I mean, you uh -huh. put five percent just to bump them um, a little bit, a little sparkle. Yeah. And that being said, is like even with Tony Williams' ride, you might bump a little of the high end just to get a little more brightness, like three K or whatever stick you know uh cutting or 2k or whatever on an eq but like yeah um yeah i don't know i mean yeah uh, so ba different. basically like the point we're driving at here is just like if you want to sound like that first of all you should you should want to sound like yourself you know use him as an influence sure you know soak it up listen to it practice and try to sound like him but develop your own st sound and style but uh you know use your gear as like a tool to achieve becoming who you are as opposed to just thinking i'm going to get this geared so i can be this thing like that guy or whatever you know yeah that's all yeah so. i mean uh and i think in dave's episode about tony williams and i've heard it also about i think in a ringo episode where they like try to symbol out and everyone was like i don't really like that i don't really like that that symbol and then people are like well that was tony's symbol that's what i'm saying man like i bet a lot of people if you heard it in you in your house in your room you might it's gonna sound way different yeah. You know, I've noticed that with my own stuff. Like I have this controlled little studio where I do all my testing. And sometimes when I take them out to do a clinic or something and I hear them, I'm like, wow, they sound way different yeah. out here to the point where yeah. I started testing my cymbals in different rooms now in my house, yeah. you know, because uh, sure. really the, the room makes a huge difference. So, oh my God, the yeah. room is huge. I mean, that's, that's true with like audio engineering stuff. It's like the car test. It's like put the CD in your car and drive around because it's going to be different yeah. than or on like your, you know, Amazon Echo or whatever. Like, yeah, it, it's the same as. Yeah, for sure. So, and if you're like if you're listening to it through an iPhone speaker or whatever, like that's a whole other thing. You know, yeah. it's, you're not really yeah. listening to it. You listen to a part of it. So um, <laughs> no, like I just wanted speakers. to bring up one thing super quick. A bunch yeah. of people had asked me like, hey, well, can you talk about the Zildjian alloy secret? And I'm not going to do that. Like, <laughs> I could. I have a pretty okay. good idea of, like, what's going on through people that I know, things that I've learned, researched, this and that. But, look, Zildjian has been around for hundreds of years. Huge company, a company I respect tremendously. And they have protected this for a very long time. And it is not my place as someone who, in the scheme of things, is somewhat of a newcomer. To come out yeah. and be like a whistleblower, like blowing the lid off of their thing. Like that would not be cool on yeah. my part at all. Like that's not my place to do that. So I'm not, I don't want to get into it. So. Yeah. I mean, that's like when there's like a new magician who comes on the magic scene and is telling everyone the tricks, you know, to relate yeah. it to magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just feel like it would be super disrespectful for me to like no, to and speak I agree. on that. I agree. I yeah. think that's great. I think it's, um, if you've put it together and can figure it out, I mean, let the some. It's kind of cool to have the magic and the mystique. It is like sometimes you don't want to see what's behind the curtain, you know. Exactly, it's, it's better to just to just have that fantasy going on. So, yeah, just yeah, just, just run with it, man. Don't 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 even don't think about it. No, just enjoy them. Um, last thing that's not on the list here, and we we talked about it a little bit. So, 
Uh, someone sent me an email and was asking about uh, vintage MIJ made in Japan symbols. Kind of like, what's the deal with them? Are they good? Are they bad? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I've seen different ones, and I don't know. I'm not a huge expert on these particular ones, but uh, I think a lot of them were nickel silver or B8s. Um, I think they were all kind of manufactured by one company over there and then just distributed to different um, Japanese drum makers. I, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day, this was actually before our time, like Rogers and Slinger and stuff, there was all these copy kits coming out of Japan, and they were actually oh, yeah. pretty good, yeah. and they were coming with those symbols. So this, yep. like, whatever factory this was, um, was just, you know, cranking these things out. I've heard that some of them were coming in from Germany. I don't know if that's true. Hmm. Um, so, you know, if it's if it sounds good for yeah. your purposes, totally. Um, I wouldn't spend a ton of money on it, uh, you know, unless you hear no. it first and you're, and you're super comfortable that it's what you want. Um, but I, yeah. I wouldn't put most of those neck and neck with like a with an old k or something it's not in the same no stratosphere really i don't think that's what they're meant for i think that's like like you said where like if it sounds good but i think it's a thing where like you'll get it for like 20 bucks or, or it'll be like free at like uh totally you know, and or, some or of them really do sound awesome some of them really yeah. do like you're like wow how is this 20 bucks and if yeah. you find one of those like totally grab it that's a score yeah. but be careful because they're super uh prone to breaking too I could see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, uh, thank you for suggesting that, that little bonus. Uh, so Ben, and I think I'm thinking his last name's Reich. It says Ben Reich Reich was his email. Um, he asked about Japanese symbols, um, kind of as an episode, but I figured with Nick, we could just throw it into that. Cause I, totally. I think maybe down the road we'll do more. Cause I love the MIJ stuff, but, um, not sure if there's a full episode out of the symbols, but, um, that I might be good. able to help so, you if you want to do it. I might be able to help you prepare for it. So let me know. Cool. Um, all right. Now let's talk about, um, I'd love to hear, let's talk about what you've got going on. I would love to hear more about your, you know, what's been up with you in the last, whatever, six months or so since we did our last episode. And then after that, I'm going to give a shout out to the people who suggested all these episodes or as much as I can, because there's, there's a ton of them. Um, it was kind of funny how you were like, you know, we had a couple myths and I was like, let me put it online. And then we got like, we got a ton. There was like 30 of them or something like that. So yeah, it was um, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that there's such an interest, you know, it's, yeah. it's really nice. So, um, thanks yeah, what's up with, uh, what's up with Nikki moon these days? And Nikki moon is a busy man these days. Um, Good. which is great. Yeah, it's great. Um, I just have like a few things I wanted to talk about and I'll try to go through this as quickly as I can. Um, first thing is I've sort of changed the business model a little bit, sort of updated the website, the ordering system for how things work. Um, a lot of people come to me and they want to do like the the Roman emperor thing, like, you know, bring me a pile and I'll sit there and play them and bring me another, <laughs> you know, no, bring me another. Yeah. Like I do not have time to do that anymore. Sure. It just doesn't make sense for the way uh, I'm operating. So my business now is every, it's like a made to order thing. You go on the yeah. website, there's sound clips of many 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 different things right but there's so many different variants for every series every model every size every thickness if you multiply the amount of variants there would be thousands so like if you want a 17 inch dirty angel cognac crash there might not be a video for that exact thing but there'll be a video for like a symbol from that series you know and then mm -hmm. you kind of use your imagination to like what that is as a thin crash you know yeah kind of cool. deal um but I encourage everybody to just check out the website. I've made some changes. I'm still in the process of changing it. Um, but you can literally go in there and build symbols now. You can like choose the series, learn about the series, and then go in wow. and put together like, I want this size, this profile, you know, this finish, and and build a symbol, and then I will I will make it for you. And uh, cool. I do understand that that trust is a part of that. Um, it's not always easy for people to buy something they haven't heard, but I feel like I've put enough out there people playing my stuff and you know that yeah, there's there's plenty sure. to go on and i think the reputation is there and and all that but uh you know i do understand that angle too yeah and i mean like you said you're testing them all and you're hearing them all you're not putting out like a clunker like here's no out of a thousand symbols that come out in a day here's one that's not great like you're obviously testing them and love all your symbols under a super fine microscope yeah everything is is highly scrutinized for as long as it takes for me to get what i want to get out of it 
for sure. That's and that's awesome. not to say I'm not going to make symbols and have them available from time to time, like stuff that's pre-made. That's just going to be separate. There's going to be a separate part of the website where you can go in and, and shop the, the stuff that's already there. But for the most part, like that's the new way to, you know, to buy stuff. That's cool. Um, so I just wanted to go into that. But I think it's a cool, like when I was younger, like I wanted that to exist and it didn't exist. And that's what I wanted to bring to the market. There's a lot, there's already a lot of people that are making big piles of old K's and stuff and, you know, old K copies and, you know, more power to them. That's awesome. I just wanted to bring something different to the table yeah. and give people a different kind of option. So yeah, for sure. The, the ability to kind of like build it yourself. It reminds me of like, as a kid going on DW's website and there was like the DW kit builder. I and you could like <laughs> I used to, when I was supposed to be doing other things, I would be doing that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? It's like, how much would this cost? Oh, it's $9,000. Yeah. Like, yep. great. Yeah. No, that's awesome though. Yeah. Nothing on my website that costs $9,000. So don't worry about no. it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that because I know that's a bit of a change from how things were. That's just been a, a product of like things growing and me not being able to just make piles of things for people to just come choose from anymore you know there's yeah not, there's simply not absolutely time. so um second thing is we are now an official retailer of big fat snare products cool so you can get big fat snare products on the nikki moon website which i'm super awesome. excited about and uh we're bringing back uh something we did last year at the beginning of covid which was weekly specials every week we'd offer like a symbol for a, a huge discount you know, awesome. Cool. And uh, we're bringing that back, but this time it's not going to be like standard series model stuff. Uh, it's just going to be effects stuff that we're going to be focusing on. And a lot of the specials are going to be pairing that symbol with the BF, a uh, big fat snare product. Oh, so you'll be able so to cool. get like a cool effect symbol, a big fat snare thing for like a super hot weekly deal. And I do one per week. So if you see it and you like it, get it because there's only going to be one, one a week. Like so. Like one symbol, one thing per week. Gotcha. And if you know, sometimes maybe I'll do two if it gets to that point. But yeah, hmm. like I mean, one person can buy it a week, or you're selling right. multiple. Wow, right. damn. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, Just for that. That's for awesome. that one thing. Yeah, sure. Um, what else? Uh, launching a new. I've had a lot of people asking me over the past year, like about doing more effectsy stuff. So um, I have an apprentice now as part of being busier. I'm, I'm training one of my artists, Jimmy, um, yeah. and he's doing a great job. And his sort of pet project to kind of get him going, learning how to do mods and other stuff is he's going to be sort of taking over this Blue Collar Boutique FX series. Blue Collar Boutique is sort of like my sub brand of symbols I don't spend quite so much time on so I can bring the price point down to mm -hmm. something a little bit more accessible to people that, you know, can't afford the, the you know, the 93 octane stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're still awesome handmade symbols that there's just a little bit less time goes into them. So this is going to be kind of a component of that. So it'll be the That's PCB cool. FX. Um, and we did some prototyping. I put some stuff on Instagram, you know, a couple days ago. So just be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, some more partnership stuff. Um, I had another project coming up in a couple of months. I'm working with Woodland Percussion and uh, Big Fat Snare and Creative Percussion. We are putting out what's called the uh, Boutique Starter Pack. Mm. So this is something geared towards, like, if you're maybe a younger dude or whoever, really, and you're playing, like, your run-of-the-mill Guitar Center gear, right, and you kind of want to dip your toe into, like, the boutique -y world mm -hmm. and start getting some stuff, we're offering a uh, Nicky Moon Blue Collar Boutique Ride Symbol. You'll have a choice of regular, dry, thin, or medium. And then there's going to be a woodland percussion stave snare drum where you get to choose like your wood and the color. There's going to be a couple of different options there. There'll be a big fat snare, um, probably a snare barine, a snare drum a product, and there'll be a creative percussion stack. So you're going to get all of that cool boutique stuff and it's going to be priced at like around 800 bucks ish. Wow. Yeah. It's a good deal. Yeah, I love it's a, the like. It's a sick deal. I love the combining of like these cool brands. Um, I'm all about it. I just think there's so many like so many cool people all, doing stuff. Yeah, they all fit together um, yeah. in such a cool way. Yeah, I, I I've met so many awesome awesome people through you know through the drum world, the drum industry world, and yeah, I I just love collabing. Like I think that's what music's all about. You know, it's it's is it fun to play guitar in your bedroom alone, or is it fun to play with a band? You know, it's way more fun to play with a band. So yeah, I like getting like, together. I do, stuff. and even beyond playing, it's the like, I mean social media love it or leave it like it's just talking to people like you and like meeting these people and like ben from big fat snare drum yeah he's like cool we guy. text 
uh, multiple times a week, just about random things. And it's like, um, it's all because we're putting ourselves out there and, totally. uh, yeah. And just doing it. So, um, man, that's awesome. Well, congrats on all that. I Thank mean, you. I got two more. I know yeah, we're running over a little bit. I'm going to bang them up no, super you're quick. Good. You're fine. I just want to announce, I got a couple of new artists joined the team this year. We got Kira. She's from the UK. She's and we awesome. got Chris Pitts from Texas. Um, cool. I'm super happy to have both of them. Um, both people that, that I sought out because of, uh, unique talents and great personalities great attitudes and i'm stoked to be working with them and we're going to be doing more cool content with them and, and all kinds of stuff coming up yeah and the very last thing i just wanted to drop is uh, just about people getting in touch with me if i could just ask um a lot of the uh, people get in touch with me through dms either through instagram or facebook or whatever um it really helps me out enormously if you can contact me at my email address info at nickymoon.com or just simply go to the website, www.nickymoon.com, and there's a contact me. There's multiple places to contact me, and that will, again, be routed to my email. And that yes. allows everything to be itemized, and people are in order, and I can, if I haven't read something yet, I can leave it bold, so I need, I know I need to go back and read it. It's becoming just impossible to manage yeah. the incoming data, you know, and those social yeah. media messaging things are just, they're kind of, you know, crappy. In relation to like a good email. Instagram doesn't let you search like words. Like yeah. I'll get an episode suggestion and I'm like, oh my God, like, okay, vintage Japanese. And I'm like, okay, I'm never going to find this. I've lost people's messages and, and, and all I that, lose them I, a lot. That's the, that's the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up yeah. is sometimes, and then I'll go back and I'm looking through and I'm like, oh my God, here's this dude that like we were in the middle <laughs> of a conversation and like, I didn't mean to drop off. It's just like, you know. Yeah. It's a lot easier. So if, if everybody would be on board with that, I would be super, super grateful. Um, well, what is the email? It's info at nickymoon.com. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, all good stuff. It's, it's cool to see that you're progressing. I mean, you're obviously already doing great stuff. Um, but just since our last conversation, how much it's like just the, the, the collaborations and the new artists and all that stuff. Cool. Um, Thanks, man. Nick has been kind enough, uh, per usual with a lot of the recent guests, not every episode, I can't promise that, but, um, a lot of them such as Nick are going to hang out and do a Patreon bonus episode. So I think with Nick, what we're going to talk about is like, if I were to come to him and want a symbol, how would I most efficiently and, uh, cleanly tell him what I want? Not like, um, symbol loud. Or I want yeah. hard hitting, you know, I want metal, like yeah. really like what's the best way to describe things, maybe some, you know, of the correct vernacular to really get what's in your brain out to a symbol maker such as Nick. So such a, um, such a cool topic, man. It's a great, great thing to talk about, actually, because that this is something this is my daily life, really. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And I'm sure there's all kinds of terms that, that are in there. So um if you want to hear that, uh, if you're a patron, then it'll be on patreon.com slash drum history podcast. Um, and uh, thank you for subscribing. And if you're not, go ahead and head to that link and uh, you can pay two bucks a month up to as high as you want and um, uh, support the show and get cool stuff like that. Now, as we wrap up, I'm going to try and quickly do this. Um, and there's a lot of them. This might be boring if you're not. Um, if you're not, if this isn't one of you, but, uh, let me just run through the people who suggested episodes. Cause I don't know. Shout I think it's outs. cool. To it's cool to hear your name on a podcast. It totally or your, is. These are your, you know, username on Instagram though. So, and I'm not going to say what your suggestion was, cause that's going to take forever, but, uh, newbie, newbie, newbie. <laughs> thank you. Wally barge. Garboscala Corpse. Uh, some of these are some crazy names. It's Schlaz fun to say the names, man. <laughs> Schlaza Greens. Official Snare Geek. That's Nate. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, Nicholas yeah. Cataneo. Uh, Lawrence Colorado. AAC Slater. Um, Nithia BK. Maxwell Schaff. Jared Stalker. Bafigura. Santi RT94. Lilith 1976. Uh, Robert Drumster, Bobby1612. There's a lot of these. Thanks for listening if you're still listening. Uh, Olam Off Gel, Vegetis, Vegetis. 
um Gico Keen, Dino Caravello, Vitalizer Drums. That's Vincent. Thanks, Vincent. Dennis R L R R, Philip Aquina, uh, Stanley Abel, Draw HP Heavy, Villobos R23, David Maha Maho and Co. Jason uh Berthold, Berthold, he's awesome. We've talked for a long time. Um Britta Hibernia, Grayson M, Carlos. Carlos A, getting close to the end here. I've cut some names off. Grayson M, Carlos again, Proof Strange, Audio Evidence Mobile, Don's Snare. That's a good Damn, name. Damn, that's a heck of a list. <laughs> yeah. I know so a bunch that, of those folks, man. I recognize some of those those peeps. Yeah. It's cool. Again, it's the community. So if you yeah. just listen through all that, thanks a lot. That was a lot of names. That <laughs> well, Let me tell you, how it, was, it was fun just watching you go through that. I enjoyed that very much. <laughs> I was struggling there. Yeah. Um, all right. So on that note, then uh, Nick and I are going to wrap up here and we're going to hop over to the Patreon bonus episode. But um, again, Nick, proud of you for doing everything you've been doing since we've thank talked you since so very much last. And and thank you for sharing your knowledge here. Thanks so much for having me. I love doing this. So I really appreciate the opportunity to get out here and run my mouth. Thanks, man. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning.